all right guys welcome to the channel welcome back hope everyone had a good thanksgiving and what i have here today is a starter motor it's a tecumseh model number 37000 and it is from an aaron's 1128 snowblower uh, nicknamed orange crush and the issue we're having with this is you press the button you press the button and the motor works but the gear is not engaging uh, so I'm just gonna go over some things to look for before you end up tossing a starter away now this one we don't have to open up because we know that it's functioning you know there'll be other uh, instances where it just doesn't come on at all that's not the case here uh, when it was on the machine I know that it was coming out you know basically how this works is when you engage the button there's so much force and there's a worm gear here and what that'll do is force this gear out and it will engage the flywheel and once the engine starts this will retract back uh, to this position here so I'll just go over uh, this is going to be a quick video you're going to have this metal piece here that will go on here first and you can see how it it's threaded to go on that worm gear there and then you have this now it's kind of a weird setup because this appears to work by friction in other words the bottom of this gear is rubber and so with the force it forces this outward which in turn forces this gear outward to engage the, the flywheel uh, so that would go on first and then you would have this here which does not have threads in it which I thought is kind of odd you think it would have threads in it so this appears like it's just this metal comes out this plate and because this is rubber it's working by friction this touches the rubber and it turns this um, so this would go on here and then you would have the spring for the tension which would go here and you have this uh, ring right here and the opening would go on top you would put it in here and then you would have this little uh, now it's, this is a very soft metal you'll see there's a slot on this uh, shaft here and they do have special tools to remove this but I just used uh, pliers you can use a couple pairs of pliers a screwdriver it's very soft metal so it's not that hard to uh, get off of here you can see I've got it off I'm not going to spend the money on the tools just to get this off they actually have a tool to get this rubber cap off which I thought was ridiculous but after this goes on then this rubber cap would go on here like that um, so I was able to get this ring off it's not a big deal like I said it's soft if you can peel it off enough uh, putting it back on isn't that hard you would just have to put it on put all your parts on Put this back on and just take some pliers and kind of just uh, go around and set it back in there uh, so that's how this works now I think what might have happened with this is that there was some grease you don't want to over grease this uh, you don't want to use white lithium grease because this does work by friction it appears so if you put grease in here this is going to slip and so when the gear comes out you know it'll engage the flywheel but the shaft here will just spin and i think that's what what's happening here um, so like i said i'm not going to take this apart because it is functioning but we will put this back together and by doing that you'll be able to see how it was taken apart very simple 
Uh, this would be to a, an engine, probably 8 to 11 horsepower engine. They do have different ones where it would have a cover on here. Uh, some of them fly this way and engage, and others fly out and engage. This is one of the ones that fly out and engage. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put this thing back together. I'm just going to put a little bit of 3-in-1 oil on these uh, on the worm gear. I'm not going to go crazy with the oil because, like I said, it's just going to slip. Uh, it's natural to think, well, we, we can just put a bunch of grease on this, but in this case... Like I said, if you do that, uh, more than likely it's going to slip. Uh, I'm thinking that's the problem because there's no other parts here uh, that are damaged. One thing you want to look for if it is slipping is this gear here. It makes sure all the teeth are good on it because what's common is these will grind down. And, you know, this will come out, but it doesn't have the teeth to engage with the flywheel and... Uh, that's a one of the issues you would look for. Uh, that's not the case here. All the parts are uh, working good. The spring is good. Uh, like I said, this is kind of a simple uh, setup. I do have parts, if you saw my other video, uh, from the other starter that I had to bury. It has many more parts to it. A couple C-clamps. Uh, now, there's also a rubber piece here, but there's many more parts. Uh, this one doesn't, it's pretty simple actually, uh, the operation of it. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is, like I said, I'm going to put a little oil on here. I'm not going to go crazy with it. I cleaned up this piece here. Uh, because what this piece will do is, when it spins out, it's going to engage with this rubber in here so I clean this all up um, that's basically how that works so let's go ahead and put it back together and uh, see what happens all right so we're gonna go ahead and put this metal piece on here but first I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil on this worm gear like I said you don't need much if it's functioning properly don't over oil it but that's a common issue too is where if it's not engaging you know these sit for a while they get rusty and these parts may not be moving um, that is not the case here so I think we might be in good shape so we're gonna put this gear on here we're gonna go ahead and put the spring on And then we have our kind of a, a ring type deal here. We're going to put that on with the opening on top there because of this clip here is going to sit inside of there. So I'm going to put that on there, push it forward. Now you can always put a pair of uh, pliers here to hold this in because it is going to pop pop out just like that. And we're going to put our uh, clip back on here. And sometimes it can be tricky. have a pair of pliers here I'm going to try to just start it get it on there okay we've got it on there now so now it's just a matter of clamping that clip back on there. Like I said, it's very soft metal. It is a little bit tricky getting off sometimes without that special tool, but like I said, it's really not necessary to go out and buy that tool when you can get it off uh, with a couple screwdrivers or a couple pairs of pliers. So 
So you can see that clip is on pretty good. We're just going to go around and make sure it's tight. And you can see it's turning properly. And as I turn it, it's, it's forcing its way forward. Now we're going to try it and just make sure it's moving out properly. So I'm going to get an extension cord here. We're going to plug it in and just test it out. And it should force its way out very quickly because of the torque of the motor. And hopefully when we hook this back up, it's going to uh, engage the flywheel and turn over the motor. All right, so let's get a look at it. I'm going to engage the button here. So you can see that's functioning. You have the gear coming out. That's what it's supposed to do. Um, so we're good there. Um, a lot of times what people will do too, and they'll burn out the motor, is holding that button down too long. You only want to hold it down for a few seconds at a time. Um, and then let it cool down a little bit, do it again. Because if your snowblower isn't starting properly, it's, it's another issue. You probably have a carburation issue or another issue that's preventing it from starting. So try not to hold the button down too long. Um, so we're going to get out there, put this thing back in and see if it works. And also don't forget this black rubber cap that's going to snap on the okay. end. Okay. So we have the starter back in, uh, the top two bolts kind of have a rounded head on them. And because of the slots on the top of the starter, you really don't have to remove them all the way. It's much easier. You just loosen them up and take those bottom two bolts out and it'll come right out. We have it back in and I would recommend using Loctite uh, uh, because of the vibrations of the motor, the engine, uh, those tend to come loose. So now we got it back in here, let's give it a shot, see what happens. All right, so we have it all hooked up, it's all back together, we got it plugged in. I'm not going to fully start the machine, but I just want to make sure I hear the compression. I want to make sure the engine's turning. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, that sounds good. That's what we want. Now before it was just doing a zzzz, kind of a spinning sound and it wasn't engaging. So just keep that in mind if you're working on your snowblower and the starter is not working. Try, try those simple things first before you decide to bury it in the backyard. Um, so I hope those tips helped you. Um, and we got some snow coming soon, so got to get all the machines going. Um, but thanks for watching the video. Subscribe. Uh, like it if it helped you out. Um, and we'll see you next time.